Hello, welcome to another JDG Sport video. This is episode 13. I'm James Gordon. It is number 13. It is unlucky for some because I have had a few weeks without a video, so I apologise for that. We had a few technical gremlins and also just being mad busy with a bit of client work towards the end of the football season and uh, leading into the summer. Um, I wanted to raise a debate in this week's video. I want to talk about club monikers and club nicknames and... Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while now, and I'd love to hear your opinions on this. And, and I'm talking about Warrington Wolves, Manchester Giants, Bracknell Bees. I've got a Bracknell Bees shirt in the office there. Um, the the purpose and the reason behind the clubs having those nicknames, and, and are they actually worth it? Is too much time put into pushing that brand or that name that doesn't really mean anything you know Leeds Rhinos I mean does Rhinos really mean anything um and my I, I certainly think I'd rather see it that ultimately in this country it's different to other countries maybe where um the town name is is so important you know Warrington Wolves for instance it's Warrington's team it's not you know and, and Warrington have had this sort of recently where um, they've brought back their old nickname, The Wire, um, but they're still called Warrington Wolves. They've just changed their Twitter handle as well from Wolves RL to Warrington RLFC, which I think is a really good move because ultimately Warrington is the identity. That team would never move from Warrington. Um, you know, you can, if you remove the Wolves, it's still Warrington, but if you remove Warrington, you're removing the whole club and the whole, you know, the whole feeling behind the club. Um, you know, a lot of the other t other sports use it. Football don't allow it, and football don't allow sponsor names. I was just working with one of our clients, the Northern Premier League. One of their teams had to rename recently because they've been promoted um, to that level, and they had a, a sponsor name or a nickname in the in the headline they had to get rid of, and uh, in the name I should say. And it's like, well, ultimately you're representing that town. Manchester, a good example. Manchester have Manchester Giants basketball again. One of our clients, Manchester Storm Ice Hockey, uh, Manchester Thunder Netball. What do them brands mean and, and what are the colours and all that about? Because I just sort of think you're surely better saying, right, that's Manchester basketball, that's Manchester netball. And, and, and Manchester is the key thing um, about that team name. Obviously, yeah, you could do things like mascots and, and some interesting things, but you can still do that with a nickname and not a title, um, you know, a moniker in the, in the title and you can push the identity. I just think, you know, is the fact that it's Manchester Giants, for instance, going to get more people watching? Um, football, like I say, don't do it, um, and that's because all the, the football know that that team ultimately is it's about the town it's from. Um, rugby union is a good example of maybe a hybrid solution. So I quite like how Wasps works and how Saracens work in terms of they're not tied to a geographical location. So you know we saw Wasps move from London to Coventry. Um, you know, and that does work because ultimately it's that brand that you're supporting. But I think the for teams that have got both, I think you've got to decide: are you going to be Manchester or are you going to be the Giants that move around, or or the Bees, or or whatever you want to be called? Um, because the town is, in in a lot of these cases, the town is the most important thing. A good example, and I don't know if there's any cricket followers watching. Cricket are going through this mental um, thing at the moment with the hundred, which is a new concept that they've created i always find it bizarre that cricket came up with t20 which has been a massive success every other sport wants to copy that success yet cricket still feels that it has to do something as well they've brought the 100 in they're bringing eight city teams together and they're calling effectively lancashire's team manchester they're calling it manchester originals which means nothing whatsoever all they have done is they've alienated all the people outside of manchester from following that team because lancashire they play games in liverpool and I think that's a prime example of where the identity of that club is Lancashire. It doesn't matter whether it's Lancashire Lightning or whatever they call it. That's the identity of the club. And the fact that they're trying to wrap it around Manchester with a silly nickname doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to hear people's opinions on this. And, and I, think a lot of, I think a lot of energy gets into promoting these monikers when the reality is it should be energy should be put into man you know into the town you know into basketball in Manchester or into ice hockey in Bracknell rather than the actual team itself. Warrington's a good example of the Warrington's club colours are primrose and blue. If that's the town's heritage and that's the town's colours, it doesn't make sense that if there's another team in another sport in that town that they don't wear them same colours as well because that's the identity of the club. Um, so, yeah, it, I've been thinking about it quite a bit and, you know, I'd love to hear some comments. So please do leave a comment in uh, on the YouTube. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please do find me on Facebook and Twitter and let me know what you think. Uh, I hope this stimulates some debate and thanks for watching.